This is for the nerds, this is for the brainiacs, this is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it, man. I know what I know. But tell people a little bit about like your poker history. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I've been playing poker professionally since before Black Friday, a couple years before that. Um, was doing that full time for a few years. Uh, then I started buying action in people, like just percentages of live tournaments, like you mentioned. I did a bunch of that on two plus two. Um, they used to have a marketplace on those forums um, and just buying from my friends. Um, and so, yeah, I did that for a few years, uh, had some success with that. And then that's when I got into like full time backing, like makeup deals, mm -hmm. it, which, you know, felt like a pretty logical progression to me. I had like built up some money and um, was, was like, OK, what's the next thing? What are we going to put it into? So. Then I started backing people full time. That was around 2014. And um, ever since then, I've, I've kind of been like part time playing poker myself and then the other part time, like really working with these players I back. Ideally, they're providing some value to that player from coaching them, mentoring them, just adding value as well as adding the bankroll. So, so that's a positive in the player's favor. Um, but then in order for it to be harmonious, like the backer needs to be getting paid back for that. They need to be getting a return on their investment. And so so that means that the player would be playing enough volume. They would be studious. They would be working on their own to improve themselves. Uh, they, they would just be winning, you know. Yeah. So that's what every backer is shooting for when they start out a deal. But um, I mean, through my experience, it's it takes a lot of work to to actually arrive at, at that. And then the flip side of that is like a free rolling deal, which would be a poker player that enters a backing agreement and is just takes too much risk, basically. Um, maybe it's, I mean, free roll is like an extreme form of that. Just if you if you get into the backing deal and just start firing off in the biggest tournaments possible, trying to right. get, get a big score, like not, not caring about losing your backers money. Um, that's an extreme example of it, but, but you see everything in between. You see like yeah. little shades of gray of that. So let's say you have a player that's like playing uh two five, right? And it, it was kind of comedic because you're like, Oh, I want him to do well, but I don't want him to do that well. Um, but let's say your decision to have them move up or not move up, um, I think was one of the more interesting parts of, of, of like your, your website, right. Or like or when I was reading it, I was like, wait, I was like, okay, so what did the player, what did the backer want the player to move up because they make more money, but then you made a really good argument in that like, well, they could just leave. So if you have a good, you know, if they make enough, then they could be on their own. That's bad for you. Um, so talk about your decision of like how you handle like successful horses. Yeah. So this is one thing I realized early on with backing is that, yeah, the incentives can get messed up between the backer and the player. If, if you have a player that is doing great, they're winning a lot at some point they're going to win so much that they don't need the backer anymore. They'll just go on their own. Then me as the backer, I'm not profiting from this player anymore. So, I mean, if I'm just looking at it from a business standpoint, just trying to make money, that would be a scenario I would try to avoid. I would try to avoid having them make too much money to go on their own. Um, but I mean, I realize that's like pretty evil. That's <laughs> no one would want to work with me if I do that. That's terrible. So, so I pretty quickly like changed my mission to be, um, I, I'm just trying to help my players make the most money possible. I, I'm really trying, trying to get them to go on their own as fast as possible, really. You know, going back to your three profiles, uh, the little bit of investing that I've done, I would say that the only time you see a harmonious, uh, sort of backing deal is when somebody is already 
self-sustaining to some degree, right? They have some amount of liquidity and they're just looking to scale and you're offering them the ability to scale either through, well, just basically through resources, right? It's through knowledge, it's through money, it's through um, the, the ability to study together, whatever the case may be. But uh, I think it's very difficult for somebody who's broke to be a harmonious horse. Um, they're just either gonna fall into the free rolling or rent seeking category in some capacity because they're, they're so desperate to, uh, to make means to an end. And what I found, you know, particularly with like makeup deals, uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on uh, why you go with the more standard 50-50 with makeup. Because what I found is that uh, you don't really create independence that way. Um, the last handful of deals I've done, I've created them more like a startup where some amount of capital was raised either collectively between myself and the horse or, or whatever, or if they were getting a free roll, they were just getting a lesser piece. And then they would earn back equity as the business grew, right? So it incentivized them to not take distributions and to actually grow the business and scale through the stakes uh, rather than, you know, just saying like, okay, your deal is a two, five deal. I'm going to invest X amount of dollars. We'll square up every time you win and I'll take the worst of it every time you lose. Uh, and you'll just like owe me until they get desperate. I like that idea. Yeah. I feel like I've, I've seen you write about this on Twitter maybe a while ago, and I definitely thought it was interesting. So it sounds like what you're doing is, as the player has some profits, has some winnings, they don't just get to cash out 100% of their cut. They have to right. start risking some of theirs, start putting some skin in the game. Mm -hmm. I, I would definitely be interested to to read more about that. And what I aim for is mostly cash game players, um, it's much lower variance, and but we do still do classic makeup deals. Um, but I'm I'm trying to get them to a bigger profit chop as quickly as possible. So like up to seventy percent in their favor mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. And um, it it does work out. I would say my sort of deal has the, has the downside where I am free rolling them the whole way, but. These ones have worked out for me just because um, the variance of cash is much less. How do you approach that, right? Because Berkey was kind of referencing, like, if you have a, a horse who is is good but broke, how do you approach that situation? Because, like, that that's tough, right? Because you have someone that can't necessarily sustain themselves yet, but they might be good at poker. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, when your horse is broke, like you, you have to pay them. There's just nothing else that you can do it, Like if you don't pay them, they will start taking money from the bankroll you provide them. I've seen that time and again. Um, I mean, a human being puts their survival above everything, right? It's, right. it just makes sense. So ideally it would be very hard to to start off a deal with someone if they started being broke because it would just be very unattractive from the backer's perspective. You would have to start giving them loans immediately. It's ironic because a lot of the, these deals, like when you get approached, it's when they're broke. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of assumed that all the players I backed could manage themselves. Because, I mean, that's what I did as a poker player. I could always manage myself. So I was like, okay, I'll just give these guys money and, like, watch them go. And it's like, it's that's just not how it is. <laughs> um, the the players that, that seek out backing deals, you know, they're seeking out a backer for a reason. They, they need the guidance, for sure. And so, yeah, I just wasn't equipped to do that early on. I, I kind of had to learn learn how to be like strict with people, how to communicate better, like set real boundaries. Um, you become a parent overnight. It's, <laughs> it's funny that you say that it's, yeah, I feel like this is like the, I feel ready to be a parent now yeah. and I was not before. <laughs> yeah, totally yeah. understand. Like a lot of the responsibility gets shifted onto you because it's your money. So like you are the one who's, most responsible in a fiduciary sense and it's really hard to transpose that onto people who are you know like you said kind of seeking a, a means to an end